Hi everyone. Uh, today we're here to discuss the prompts uh, 22 to 28 for 31 Days of Tarot 2021. So the first prompt is, uh, if you were shipwrecked on an island, what five tarot uh, or oracle decks would you bring and why? This is a super fun prompt. And for this one, I think I'll just stick with the tarot. Uh, so the first deck I would bring is the Moo Tarot. Um, I don't know why, but in this scenario, in my mind, I was shipwrecked alone. So I thought this would be a super fun deck to take uh, because, first of all, it's fully plastic. So I can go swimming with it. Uh, it doesn't matter if it gets wet. And secondly, all the cards have little blurbs on them that are super fun. So I can feel like... Um, I have some company with me, you know, I can, yeah, read with them no matter what the weather is, or go swimming with them, there's a chat in here, you know, take chat, go for a dip in the ocean, uh, we have a super, super fun time. So that's my first deck. Uh, and then my second and third decks are the Maria Celia and the White Sage Tarot. I would take these uh, because I'm currently working with the Tarot de Marseille, and this is my favorite Tarot de Marseille deck uh, to date, I suppose. And I also really enjoy working with the White Sage Tarot. Uh, they bring in chakras, and they're like this light water watercolory imagery with animals. Um, and there's the bonus of them coming in these like super sturdy tins. So again, it doesn't matter if it rains or you know where I throw them. They'll be safe in their little tin homes, and they're also super small, so I can like grab a banana leaf or something and do nice big spreads on them. Um, in my mind, it's there's, there's banana trees <laughs> on this shipwrecked island that I found alone. <laughs> so those are my other two decks that I would bring with me. Uh, fourthly, I have the Alchemical Tarot by Robert M. Place. And this is one of the decks that I want to work with more this year, uh, but I may not get the chance to um, because I can't get the book. And I find this hard, uh, deck super hard to, to read with, to understand um, personally. So you know what? What the hell? Take it with me. Maybe I'll find the book somewhere on this island or otherwise the heat stroke and sun stroke will give me some divine insight on what these cards are um and finally my fifth choice would be the chemonet chemonet uh tarot and i chose this one uh for those serious um look into your soul <laughs> kind of readings or days I might have. Uh, I think this is like my most serious pick out of the five. Um, because I chose this one with like serious readings in mind. Um, also just very beautiful. And when I have something serious I want to address. This deck also has um, a suit of swords where there's not one single swords card that I dislike and that's rare for me I'm very picky with my sword suit and I think this deck just does it so beautifully in every single card the interpretations are really nice so and this queen of swords is possibly my favorite queen of all time <laughs> of swords so yeah this one definitely would be coming with me. Um, realistically, hopefully, <laughs> not really. This deck would definitely get ruined, I feel like, but it's there. It's important to me, so I would take it with me or hope to have it with me. Moving on, uh, day 23, the prompt is, what is your most sassy tarot deck and what is your most gentle tarot deck? And why did you choose these? So... I cheated again, but just a little bit. Uh, for my sassiest decks, I have, first of all, the Affirmators Tarot. And I chose this one not because of the cards, 
but because of the guidebook. And whenever I use this deck, I use it with this guidebook. It just has, it's, it's like talking to a friend, uh, the way that this book is written. And it's very straightforward and it has that kind of sass to it. Um, and there's little affirmations for each card, so I'll read a couple out maybe. Um, fear is boring. I'd rather be soaring. And also speaking in rhyme, apparently. <laughs> so those are the kind of messages that are in this booklet. And I always use this booklet when I'm working with this tarot. So for me, I find that the messages I get are super sassy. And I attribute that to the, um, to the guidebook. Now, the deck I chose for the imagery as being kind of super sass imagery is the Housewives Tarot. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So you can see the imagery is super, super sassy. Almost kind of ironic, even. And um, whenever I read with it, I feel like the imagery is speaking some sass, maybe even mocking me a little bit. Um, and side note, this deck, whenever I use it, always reminds me of the movie The Stepford Wives. I think that's what it's called. Uh, the kind of super creepy one <laughs> with the perfect little world and the perfect little housewives. Um, so that's what it reminds me of. And I just get a sassy feeling from it. Uh, the day 20... Oh, before I move on, the most gentle deck, of course. How can I forget the gentle deck? I chose um, the Embroidered Forest Tarot. And this one doesn't, mu doesn't need much explanation as to why it's so gentle. I think, <clears throat> I mean, and this is a good example. There, there are skeletons and kind of not, it doesn't shy away from, from kind of uh, the negative aspects or some of the more serious messages. But I think the fact that they're all embroidered, it kind of feels like, being with my grandmother or being in my grandparents' house, it has this kind of soft feeling. You can almost feel the textures and the materials uh, on it. I know the Ten of Wands has a little bee that stabbed with the, are they daffodils? Maybe. Now I can't find it. Yeah, daffodils. Um, and there's like little red blood splots. So the imagery that, it doesn't shy away from, from traditional imagery, but the way the medium that's used just makes it feel really soft and really gentle. So yeah, that's what I chose for my gentle deck. Okay, now we can move on to day 24. The prompt is share one tarot myth you used to believe and why you stopped believing it. So I grew up, um, in a Catholic household, Catholic school, all the Catholic things. So I actually, there was a lot of uh, misinformation and myth that I believed in. But uh, the one that I will share with you today is I used to believe um, that the tarot was meant for divination and that I had to have uh, some kind of um, power or inclination to like like to be a psychic to use the tarot. Um, that's what I believed at first when I started to express an interest in tarot. I thought it wasn't for me. I'm not a psychic. I don't, you know, I don't need the tarot. But then I actually got into the I Ching, and <clears throat> although it could also be used and was traditionally used for divination. Reading through that book, uh, the translated version of that book, it's so philosophical, and I found so much more in there than, than just divination. So I started looking into tarot again, and then I found some channels such as Supportive Tarot with Lisa and Simon at the Hermit's Cave uh, that showed me um, that you can use tarot in many different ways, such as... Um, self-care or, or collecting and enjoying the artwork and even before that I found um, Sacred Sea channel which 
really, I, I love her channel. She's not on YouTube anymore, but it really resonated with me uh, because at the time I was studying the I Ching and she also has very um, philosophical and um, kind of theoretical views of, of tarot. So it kind of really clicked with the way I was starting to look at it. And then of course that brought into self-care and art and collection and reflection and bettering of the self. So yeah, I do not need to be psychic to use the tarot. <laughs> Um, day 25, the prompt is thoughts on tarot becoming mainstream. So overall, I think it's a great thing and um, I'm really happy that it, it's going mainstream. It means that um, it'll be more accepted and there's just going to be so much more art out there. I just hope that it doesn't get too complicated and that Things don't turn hateful. Um, I hope that we can keep like a good supportive community and accept people's different uh, views and uses of the tarot, which I'm sure will happen as anything goes mainstream because not everyone is the same. And yeah, so <laughs> I'm really glad it's going mainstream and I hope that it doesn't turn into something negative. Um, and day 26 is share your first professional reading experience. So, I personally have never had a reading done for me. I need to change that for sure. Um, so that's one of the things I do want to do this year. But I did go to kind of a psychic fair in high school. Uh, and my friend had a reading done for her and I was there. And it, I remember it was an older man and he used the RWS, like the plaid backs and everything. And the stories and the way he he kind of, uh, I don't want to say predicted, but it's, it's like he knew things, but he wasn't specifically talking about my friend or our lives. It was just the way he was weaving the stories together, I found super interesting. Uh, and that was when I started looking into tarot again. Um, I don't know if I'm making sense, my timeline, <laughs> but I thought that tarot was for psychics, not for me. Uh, for a while and then we went to the psychic fair I heard that reading and I thought maybe it could be for me because he wasn't telling us the future and he wasn't telling us about ourselves specifically but there was so much truth in what he was saying and the stories he was presenting us and um, I've always loved literature so I thought that was interesting the way he used it uh, so that was my first experience uh, watching and listening to a reading but it wasn't for me <laughs> Um, uh, question number seven is how do you pick your tarot decks for readings so for others uh, I want a deck that's super easy for me to read something like the everyday witch tarot which um, it just reads so easily for me I have a copy in my bedroom for myself as well as out in the, um, this shared living space for whoever is interested to look through or to use or to flip through um, to play with right um, I want a tarot that has imagery that isn't very extreme or confronting. So also something like the Enchanted Forest Tarot would be good because it's gentle. Uh, but for myself, I might open the cabinet and see what I'm drawn to at that moment. Sometimes a certain mood or a question will determine which deck I choose. Uh, day 28, the prompt is, how do you feel Ooh, my eyes are tired. How do you feel about tarot deck modification? So I have no problems with tarot deck modification. I think that if you need to modify your deck or you want to, then go for it. I often do um, because I believe, you know, do what you need to do to make it work. Uh, the kind of least extreme modification I've done is just edging a deck and this is a really kind of not intimidating thing you can do just to make the deck feel a, li a little more customized a little more you maybe it looks a little more finished uh, this is my raven's prophecy tarot so i edge them in a couple of different oranges to match the very orange feel and borders 
Uh, so that's kind of the minimum uh, I do to a deck. I haven't edged all my decks. Some of them feel like they don't need it. Like like my Shaman Knight, I just feel like it's so complete and so perfect. Um, but others, like this one, I felt like the colors were so bold in this deck that the edges also needed to be bold. Sometimes I'll do it when the deck gets old or chipped, then I'll also edge it. Um, apart from that, let me look. I've also cut and edged a deck. Um, so this is the Druid Craft Tarot. And this one, I just cut off the white borders and the titles. And I left the little green borders around it just to make it a more usable size because they were enormous and I couldn't use them. So that was like a practical reason um, for modifying a deck. And then I also edged it. Um, often I find after cutting a deck, it needs, it needs to be edged to look finished. Um, but this one was super easy because it had the borders. So uh, using measurements, just cut around the borders, super easy. And um, yeah, so sometimes I edge the sides, sometimes I cut them to make them workable size. What else do I do? Um, well, along the lines of cutting them, this was a much more extreme cutting job uh, that I did finally finish after filming that other video where I complained about this deck. It's the Mons Tarot. It was also really big and the cardstock was really bad. This is one of the cards that I bent. I don't know if it will come up on camera. There it is. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. And I did that to a couple of cards, if not three cards. Uh, so this one I cut. Uh, it was a more intimate trim than this one. Because like I said, this one had the borders. So I just trimmed off the borders. Easy. Uh, this one, I think I still have an original card. Because... I didn't want to include this one in the deck. This one, as you can see, had no borders. And I used a standard tarot size to measure it. So what I had to do was kind of move a card around and decide what I wanted or needed in the, in the image. Sometimes bits got cut off. So this one was a much longer uh, trimming process and a much more intimate experience as I had to um, decide and make decisions uh, regarding, this was one of the hardest ones, uh, regarding what would stay and what would go. Uh, so that's kind of a more extreme trim job, if you would. So we've gone over edging and trimming. Um, sometimes I will trim off like a gilded edge. And by sometimes, I mean I've only done this once. And I did it to the Mary L second edition um, because not that I have anything against or for gilding. I really don't care. But this deck came so damaged. And this was my third attempt at trying to get this deck. I don't know why. It just seemed like every time I got it, it came worse <laughs> than, than the one before it. So this was my third attempt at trying to get this deck. It was the most damaged out of all, all of the copies that I received. It was really bad. I don't have any pictures, I don't have any videos, because I was so unhappy about it. But what I had to do was end up trimming the, the damage off the corners. That removed the gilding in the process, but then some cards were more damaged than others, and I ended up removing some of the image, which I'm not super happy about, um, because I love this art. I think the imagery is very evocative. I'm looking for the one card. Oh, of course, it's the last card. This card in particular, I'm really sad about. I had to. I had to. Like, there was, it was like ripped. The whole card was ripped on this side. And this is as much as I had to take off to make it usable. Um, and this eye, like a part of it, was removed. Just a little bit, but I know that it was removed, and that bothers me sometimes. <laughs> but honestly, at least I can use the deck now. It wasn't even... I wasn't even able to shuffle it before. It was so damaged. Um, but again, be it being my third attempt at this deck, I decided that maybe just trimming it would fix that. And it did. So, sometimes trimming the gilding off 
is a process that I do. Uh, what else? Um, this I decided to do recently for no particular reason. I don't know. I'm not even sure what deck this is. So guys, if you know, please tell me. It came like wrapped in plastic wrapping and nothing else. And there's no like card, no name. It's a dog deck, a black and white dog deck. It's very pretty. Um, although the gilding is very, um, it comes off your fingers, on your fingers. So it's, it's cute. What I decided to do with it, randomly for no reason, is color it in. Uh, and here's one that I finished coloring in. Um, what I do is I take some sandpaper and I sand the image down. First I take a picture of the original image and then I sand it down. A lot of the detail gets lost in the sanding, but because it has a coating on it, I really do need to sand it down to, to be able to color over it. You can see there's, there's no, um, no film over this anymore, as opposed to that. So um, yeah, that's something, that's a project I've started. <laughs> Who knows how that'll turn out. Uh, so far, I'm liking it. I have the other card on my work table right now. I'm sanding it uh, carefully. Uh, and, oh, one more, one more. Part of the prompt was writing on tarot decks. And um, sometimes if you trim them down, you wanna write down what they are. I haven't done my trim decks because I don't know. I don't need them. I know what they are. But when I first came to China, I didn't take any of my decks with me. I thought I wouldn't need them, but I missed them. So I just looked online for something available and, I don't know, cheap, because, you know, wasn't making a lot. And I found this Chinese version of the Line Strider Tarot. Um, you know, it's nice, but even, even the booklet, it's all in Chinese, so what I ended up doing was writing what they were. And not even really writing, just using little symbols. So this is the page of wands. Um, here is the queen of wands. Uh, I use this symbol for cups. To represent cups so um yeah here's the six of cups um for the majors i just wrote i just wrote the the number so one for magician and yeah that's it here's the six of swords maybe i didn't need it because the imagery Mostly, I know now. Well, now that's the thing, right? Maybe I wouldn't have in the beginning, um, but it's pretty unobtrusive. That's just a little sword down there. So yeah, that's what I did. Sometimes I'll write on them so that I can use them. All right. <laughs> Sorry, there's. I do a lot of modification, not to everything, but when I do, it seems like I just go all out. <laughs> uh, all right. So prompt. Um, oh, and there's one more. The most extreme modification I've ever done. This is my beloved Dreaming Way Tarot. This one, I love the imagery, but I couldn't work with the backs. I just couldn't. So I worked with the fronts for a long time, uh, a year, maybe a year and a half or more. And then I finally got the courage to reback the deck. And in rebacking it, I also trimmed it. Uh, and etched it. So this is definitely my most extreme um, modification. It turned out great. I love it. I'm just in the process of re-edging it again because it wore off a bit. Uh, the backs look like this now and they're textured and lovely. I don't know if the light will catch that, but they are textured and oh, there we go. Lovely. I love the color. Um, it does make the deck really thick. Um, but trimmed down, it still shuffles really well. It's one of the decks I love to shuffle because it just slides so well with the smooth front and the textured back. Uh, this is one of the decks where like the border didn't bother me at all and I was fine with it, but it was easier to cut with the card and the backing rather than trying to cut 
just the backing, uh, if that makes sense. And I didn't listen to any of the experts <laughs> uh, that modify their decks. I couldn't find contact paper or like anything crafty that they were talking about. So I used wallpaper. This is wallpaper. I have so much of it left. Um, well, not so much, but like there's there's a wall definitely left in that wallpaper. And I'm just really glad that it worked out because I love this deck and I did not take any precautions when modifying it. I was just like, yeah, all right, wallpaper, done. And yeah, so I am grateful to the world that this worked out in the end and that it worked out so beautifully. I even love the bag that I got for it. It's so soft and plush and like lined all beautifully. Uh, yeah, okay, that's the end of my tarot modification. I couldn't end the video without that because that's my most extreme modification. It took me months to finish. Months, guys. Um, all right, so that was... Um, that was the end of the prompts for this video. I will see you for one more to answer the last three prompts. Thanks for staying with me to your, today and hope you have a great one. Take care and stay safe.